In this video, we're going to look at a full song setup just using one sensory percussion sensor. Even if you have more than one sensor, I'd encourage you to soak in this information. I think that using less sensors forces you to develop good habits with your approach to sensory percussion, and you can take those lessons into bigger setups if you so choose. Instead of going into laborious technical details about this setup, I thought I'd just highlight five takeaways that are on a more of a macro level. I hope these takeaways help you make compelling, cohesive music with this technology and aid in creating intuitive setups of your own. If you want to know more about the ins and outs of how controllers work or how to utilize the sampler, see the other tutorials in this series. You can get the SPS file for this song on my Patreon page or website. Links to both of those options in the description of this video. This song has an arc structure. Notice that the first section is pretty much the A section without drum samples. Same with the last section and the B. I know this is a drum, but it's okay to not play drum sounds throughout the entire song. Think about all of your favorite songs. There's a strong chance many of them do not have drums from top to bottom. Drum sounds are a piece of your arrangement. You can choose to bring them in to really shape the long form. Also, it makes setting up a full song much faster to reuse significant parts of your kit for different sections. I like to think that layering samples takes your ear away from noticing what either sound is on its own and creates something new. There's a good example of this in the first section with marimba and synth sounds on the rim. I have string samples that cycle on the edge. Notice that there's also a vibraphone whose pitch is being modulated. There's even a third sampler on the edge that only comes in with harder velocities, which is really just supporting the idea of chordal content in this zone. It's pretty easy to default to one sound at a time. Don't forget that layering samples can create much deeper timbre, and it gives you more chances for incorporating harmony and motion. Let's go back to that layered rim sound. Notice that the marimba sampler is set to cycle. The synth sampler is advanced by harder velocities on the center zone, which is established by this threshold setting. This creates two different harmonic paces in this layered sound. Harder velocities on the rim also advance the piano sampler on the center zone in the same way. Cross-modulating zones like this is a great way to create more interesting relationships between zones. If all of your samplers are just set to cycle mode, or you always find yourself using a dedicated zone, such as the rim of your floor tom, for advancing to the next sample, you need to diversify how you navigate your samples to create something deeper. Using a zone for multiple rules is especially necessary when using just one sensor, but it's good practice for bigger setups too. Using a single zone for multiple rules is helpful for creating cohesive and intuitive setups. In the sections with drums in this song, we're using the center zone for a melodic part. With harder velocities, a bass drum is introduced. In this B section, harder velocities add both a bass drum and a synth bass part. Without having velocity discern what sounds should happen when, we'd be stuck with all of these parts playing together all the time, which would severely limit our creative options. It might seem more straightforward to just assign each of these sounds to their own zone, but I find this to be more intuitive. Having so many controllers that allow us to link our playing to expressivity is incredible, but I think it's easy for that to overshadow the power of the LFO. An LFO can act as a free agent creating movement alongside you, which is a big deal. A simple application of this that I find really useful is using LFOs on panning. Many samplers in this song are panned by different LFOs. Sine waves make for nice gentle pan sweeps, and you can hone in the stereo width with the range settings. I used a square wave LFO on this sampler that's playing more of a supportive role. Since I viewed it as non-essential and just supportive, it seemed fitting to keep it on the extreme edges of the stereo image. LFOs can be used for more concrete compositional elements too. This vibraphone's pitch is being modulated by an LFO, creating a nice melody that would be extremely hard to play with controllers or require a lot of samples. The kalimba in the B section has its pitch modulated by a random LFO. With pitch quantize enabled, this is a quick way to make a really interesting melody with just one sample. 
My personal favorite LFO in this song is this one, which is used to advance the bass samples slowly at a rate not tied to my playing at all. This creates a really cool pace for the bass progression that inevitably jumps the bar line and lands in a different place every time. 